I'm going to kick off by giving you three deal maker rules. Okay, so the how many rules? Three. three. Okay. So why why deal making to start with? What's deal making? Well, deal making is about structuring deals. It's about making deals work. The old days in which you could throw a whole bunch of money at a random property and make money because capital appreciation goes this way is truly over. There was a time before 2008, for a good 10 years, we went through a, a very long period of property boom. You just chuck any money at any property, the chance is you've got to make money. Even if you overpaid um, a, a particular as piece of asset, you still make money. But th these days, you cannot do that. Right? For a start, um, you know, there are new legislations, uh, new tax rules. Has anyone heard about the tax rules? Yes, so it all affects the market, and these days, you're going to have to make, if you really truly want to make money in property, you can't act like a, a local landlord anymore, because now the rules penalize the individual landlords. In fact, you really have to treat property as a business. As a what, please? Business. As a business, and that's why my book is called Property Entrepreneur, and what do entrepreneurs do? We solve problems. All right, our day-to-day -day is, is all dynamic, everything we deal with. It's never a single thing that we have to attend to. Nothing is predictable. We expect problems to happen. And entrepreneurs also, we have to raise money all the time. Am I and John still raising money today? Yes. yes. All right, it doesn't matter what stage of business you're in, you always have to raise money. Even means extra zeros, right? You still have to make money. And that, and that means deal-making is an art, more than an art than a science, to make deals work. That will allow you to win and, and the seller to win. It will allow you to do property deals without having to be restricted by the conventional sort of tax rules and regulations. You can actually make any deals work. And that means you have to develop certain skills, you have to, de you have to know certain strategies. And that's what deal making is all about. So th some people will, will probably say, well, um, this has never happened before in Korea or in Singapore. And I want you to remember rule number one. All right, rule number one in deal making is, if this not been done before, it could still happen. The number of times over the years when I had lawyers telling me that, oh, th this has never worked here before, I made it work. And hence, I pioneered a technique called lease options, which you're going to be learning tomorrow in three different countries around the world, and there's no limit. So don't let people tell you that it's not been done before, and hence, you know, you cannot do it. It doesn't matter which country you're from. And number two, this is more exciting. <laughs> and listen up. If it is not illegal, <laughs> you can do. Well, if it is illegal, you definitely cannot do, right? But if it is not illegal, you can possibly do. So you have to really distinguish when some, something that people are very sensitive about, um, whether it is really, um, are you breaking certain rules or are you committing a crime? The latter is what you want to avoid at all costs because you end up in jail. But if you're breaking certain rules, what are the consequences of these rules that you break? Would you end up maybe not being able to get another, another mortgage? Would you be blacklisted for something? Uh, but as long as you don't end up being in jail, being convicted for any criminal offenses, then you can possibly consider. And that means in deal making, there is this dilemma you, you sometimes find yourself in. You have to weigh up the pros and cons. And that's what all business people do. 
all entrepreneurs well, are faced with certain situations in which you think, okay, there, there are risks in certain things we, we partake, but will the risks outweigh the benefits or vice versa? And it, that's what we need to consider. Okay, so are we clear about number one and number two? Okay, and rule number three. You have to be ethical. I think if you're not sure whether you should do something or not, ethics will guide you to make your decisions. Because if you cannot sleep at night, for me, that's not a good deal, even if you make a lot of money from it. Especially when you're dealing with people who probably want to sell the house very urgently. They're in a very vulnerable position. And yes, you're right. You can take advantage of these people who are in these situations, and people do. But how you're going to sleep at night is down to your definition of, of ethics. So these are the three rules. So what's rule number one again? If it hasn't been done. It hasn't been done? It can happen. Number two? Excellent. Number three? Give someone a high five and say the three rules of deal making. 